Hello and welcome to another Rio's how-to. And today's how-to is for the spay caster using a cast called the double spay. The double spay is a cast that you do when there's three Ds. You do the double spay when there's a downstream wind, that's D. You always use your downstream arm to make the cast. So no matter what side of the river you're on, it's always your downstream arm. And that's third D is the name of the cast, the double spay. So remember the three Ds, double spay, downstream wind, use your downstream arm. Today I've got on a Scandi line, just because it's nice and visible and bright and you'll be able to see it. This cast is done with a downstream wind, but it also is a very, very strong cast if you're using Skagit style lines. Skagit lines require what is called a waterborne anchor to make them cast well. The line needs to stay on the water to grip the heavy flies and the sink tips associated with Skagit lines. So if you've got a Skagit line, then think about the double spade because that's a really important cast to use with as a downstream wind. So that's the when to do the double spay. I'm going to wait out here and just show you how to do a double spay. So as I mentioned, the double spay is the perfect cast for the downstream wind and it's down delivered with your downstream arm, my right hand in this side of the river. And with all these spay casts, it's really important to know what is the reason for making a move. Right? The double spay has three moves, what's called the setup stroke, what's called the de-loop stroke, what's called the forward stroke. I'm going to run through those individually and show you what are you trying to do with each move. Basically, the setup stroke is the first move that goes from when you finish fishing, the line's on the dangle, and you do this move here. Just bring the rod across your body, that's the setup stroke. Then you come round and you create a D-loop, form a D-loop behind the rod, that loads the rod, and then you make your forward stroke and get the line out there, and that's your final cast and result. So those are the three steps of a double spay. Let's look at those individually. To me, one of the most useful tools you can have as a, a, a spay caster and a double spay caster in particular is an imagination. And I want you to imagine and, and maybe even draw this thing called a box, a square box. And the box is drawn by you taking your rod tip and making a splash right downstream of you. And you draw a line from that splash to your foot and then you make a splash in front of you and you draw a line to that splash and you complete an imaginary square on the water, on your right hand, your casting arm side. The object of the first move, the setup stroke, is to land the leader in the square. So my rod starts high, I lift the line up, I sweep it across and I try and land the leader somewhere in that square. If I do, I have successfully accomplished the setup stroke. A couple of things can go wrong. You can have a, a rod that starts too low and when you sweep on this first stage, the fly will go whizzing past, go upstream of you, nowhere near the square. That's a bad cast. Equally, you might have a line that's sunk or you might just do too slow a move or just be in kind of a slow motion thing and you do this first move and the leader lands way below the square. Both of those are wrong. So you're trying to achieve the leader landing in the square, in this box. The double spay starts with a still rod raised to about a kind of 10 o'clock angle. And then the tip of the rod goes over your hat, straight over your hat, all the way down to the water, and it stops about one foot above the water. That's your rod path of this first move. Start high, sweep it over your hat, down to one foot, pointing straight up river. That's your path. You're trying to get the leader in the box, as I mentioned. So let's see that whole thing again. High rod, sweep it over my head, drop the rod one foot, leader lands in the box. A perfect setup. The second move creates the D-loop. The D-loop is your load. The D-loop is the thing that bends the rod. Right? The D-loop back here is what makes the rod flex and load. So the D-loop is your friend. The bigger the D-loop, the easier a spay cast will be. The smaller the D-loop, the more effort you have to put into the spay cast. And so, what I'm trying to do on the second movement is sweep the rod round, climbing up to about a high point behind me, creating a D-loop that is exactly opposite where I want my forward cast to go. And there's a, a nice little numerical kind of phrase, if you like, 1 to 14. And what that means, that is how your rod should sweep through the double spay. The first stage starts high, finishes one foot above the water. And as you sweep around, it climbs. There it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 
and it's exactly opposite where your forward stroke is going to be. It's constantly rising on a nice steady incline like this. It's not traveling flat and lifting, and it's not going straight from here to here. It's doing this lovely long raising sweep as it comes round. It doesn't change angle, and it doesn't change speed. So easy sweep all the way around, and then the rod should stop exactly opposite where your forward cast is going to go. Let's see what that whole thing looks like. So start high, over your head, down to the water, one foot above. Sweep round, climbing, 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 up to the key position. There's the key position. Rod's ready to load, and then your final movement, of course, is the forward stroke, where you drive out, close the wedge, and release the hounds. Out she goes. So put the whole thing together, high, to low. Leaders in the box, good. Sweep from low, one to 14, lift and go. That's a double spay. It's as easy as that. A double spay is a very fluid, dynamic cast that is a controlled speed, not a rushed thing. If you want to see that again, just repeat, and rewind and watch that. I just want to go over a couple of things that go wrong, the real common mistakes that go wrong and why you should be looking out for them. The first of them, is when the line goes past you out of the box. So if you come up a little quick here and the fly passes you like this, if you continue to come this cast and you come round here, whoa, you'll see the fly will wrap you or hook you or snag you or tangle you. So that's a dangerous move. So general rule of thumb, if your rod is here and if you make this first move and you see that fly pass you, just lift up, abort the cast and start again. Don't even risk getting hooked. The opposite is where the line doesn't come anywhere near the box. So if it lands way downstream, you're safe, but it's going to be a real bad cast. When you come round, you form what's called a bloody L on the water. And when you go forward, that bloody L sucks all the energy out of the cast. And that is also bad. So first stage, land it in the box. Practice, practice, practice. So you get your leader landing the box. Second stage on the D loop, very important, the rod climbs evenly until it's opposite where you want to go. The commonest mistake here, and I don't know why it is, but I've got to say 95% of beginners do this. I don't know why, but they put in a thing called a dreaded dip. As they sweep around like this, the rod dips down into a little scoop like that. And that is a monumental disaster as far as cast effect goes. The dip lays line in the water, creates this thing called the bloody L I mentioned, creates unbelievable amounts of drag, the cast fails miserably, and you give up and throw away your rod and take up golf because you think casting's hard. It's all because you put a dip into it. Don't dip. I, I think it must be a body shape thing or some kind of dynamic because it's so, so common that people dip. I'm gonna show you those two moves, one without the dip, the first one and the second with a dip. High to low. Watch this rod, just sweeping, climbing, climbing, sweeping, climbing. That's as easy as a double spay can be. Now I'm gonna put the dip in. And again, watch the tippering of the rod. High to low. There's the dip. The cast doesn't even leave the water because that dip folded the bloody hell into the water. And then the last little phrase to kind of mention to yourself, I mentioned this box, the square I'm talking about. You want to say two things to yourself about this. One, did it land in the box? Two, did it stay in the box? So here's one. I'm going to do the cast. Get off the rod tip. Sweep. I look at the leader. Did that land in the box? Yes. Then as I come round, I want to make sure that when I'm in this key position, the leader and line is still in the box. All right, because the other common one, especially people going switching from floating lines to sink tips and stuff like that, the other common thing is that people come around with too much speed on the second move. That landed in the box, but watch this. Too much speed, and the fly has left the water. It's gone in the bushes behind me. It's no longer in the box, and you snag the nearest tree behind you. So you just want to develop a touch on this cast. Start high to low land it in the box, sweep around, make sure it stays on the water in the box, make a nice easy forward cast. And that, in a nutshell, 
is the double spay. Get out there on the water, practice your double spay. Hopefully you learnt one or two nuggets that'll improve your double spay on that one. And uh, hopefully you'll master this and get out a perfect double spay and catch a cracking big fish on it one day. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rio's How-To Videos.